Hi, and welcome to today's tutorial by Chaotic Studios, how to use Steven Slate Trigger 2 in a live setting. For more information on Chaotic Studios, please visit www.chaoticstudios.co. Part 1, how to use Trigger while tracking live drums in a studio. Step 1, miking your kick drum. I prefer to use my Audix D6 kick drum microphone and place that mic six inches in front of the beater head pointed directly at the beater. This gives you plenty of attack from the beater, not too much body from the kick drum itself, and plenty of rejection from the other instruments in the room. I plug this kick drum mic into my snake and run that snake to my Personas Fire Studio project interface. At this point I have my drummer play a nice steady kick drum pattern as I adjust the input gain until I have a nice strong signal without clipping. Step 2. Setting up your DAW or Digital Audio Workstation. First, open up your DAW. For this tutorial I'm using Cubase Pro 8. I open up my Inputs tab and I verify that Cubase is in fact reading all of the inputs from my Personas interface. Set your latency to 512 or less if your computer can handle it. This should provide you with a nearly instantaneous playback into your headphones while still giving you plenty of buffer for your machine to run properly. Any higher latency and you would have an obvious delay in your headphone mix. Step 3. Setting up your trigger track. First, add a new audio track in your DAW and name it Kick Trigger. Make sure to set the input channel to the same channel you plugged your kick drum microphone into and enable live monitoring. Step 4. Setting up trigger. Insert Steven Slate Trigger 2 into your kick trigger channel and load up a kick sample of your choosing. While having your drummer play, adjust the threshold and sensitivity levels until you have a nice consistent playback. Adjust the volume and EQ of your kick drum channel ensuring you have nice, clean, intelligible playback for your drummer. Step 5. Routing. Using your interface software, mute the incoming kick drum sample so you don't have a double. Verify that your kick trigger channel is routed to your stereo output bus. Send your interface output to a headphone amplifier and verify you're sending a nice solid signal to your drummer. Part 2. How to use Trigger 2 for live band practice. Step 1. Follow steps 1 through 4 from Part 1 for how to use Trigger while tracking in a studio. Step 5. Routing. In your DAW's Output tab, create a dedicated output for your interface to send your kick trigger channel out of. Step 6. PA system. Using an instrument cable, attach the dedicated output channel on the back of your interface to an input channel on your PA mixing board. Solo the kick channel and adjust the input gain to achieve maximum volume without clipping. You can use either the onboard EQ on your mixer or your DAW to EQ your kick drum to taste. Part 3. Using Trigger 2 to perform live. Step 1. Follow steps 1 through 5 from Part 2 using Trigger for band practice. Step 6. PA system and sound engineer. Bring a dedicated DI box to each show with you. This ensures you'll be able to change the impedance from the signal coming out of your interface to get into the stage snake. Note, prepare separate kick drums in advance for each of the type of venues you're likely to encounter. For example, if performing at a club that mainly features dance music, you might want to have a kick drum with a little less bass so it cuts through the mix. If performing at a small or outdoor venue, you may prefer to have a kick drum with a bit more lower sub-frequencies so it cuts through and can be felt more. And there we have it, how to use Steven Slate Trigger 2 in any live setting. Thank you for joining me today. Please subscribe to catch all new tutorials and music from Chaotic Studios.